What's up YouTube community, Bernd here, welcome back to this week's video lesson. This week I will show you three amazing tricks concerning neoclassical shredding. So if you're looking for a lesson on how to infuse your playing with that neoclassical metal sound, this one is for you. So once again I prepared a practical example again for this week's lesson to show you what I'm talking about in a musical context. I made sure to include all the tricks that I want to show you in just one lick, so that one is quite challenging. But the main focus of this lesson is not just learning this particular lick, it's about understanding all those little tricks that I applied here and learning how to apply them yourself whenever you're looking for that neoclassical sound in your playing. So let's check out the practical example right now. This one is quite challenging to pull off at a faster tempo, but the hours you will put into it are definitely worth it. You can find the tabs, get the profiles and a practice backing track for that lick in different tempos on my Patreon page, patreon.com slash Bernd. In case you didn't already know, I upload these really helpful files for every single weekly lesson that I publish here on YouTube. And I'm also in direct coaching contact with all of my patrons to help with their individual guitar frustrations via email. So let's slow it down and analyze each individual part. The first trick is something you might have heard already. It's called a pedal tone lick. This is pretty much the standard you start out with when you start learning about neoclassical playing. So for this lick, I'm playing in the A minor or A Aeolian scale. And I have one note, E that is constantly repeated as I'm descending in the scale. So I'm playing D, C, B, A. So played on its own, that doesn't sound too interesting. Once again, D, C, B, A. But as soon as I start moving up to E after each note, I get a sound like that. And that sounds much more interesting than So as always, I want you to practice this to a metronome so you get a feeling for this phrase. If the stretching here in A minor is a bit too intense for you at the moment, you can also move it up to E minor, for example. It's always the exact same pattern or in D minor and so on. And once you get more comfortable with it, you can speed it up and get a sound like that. So that sounds pretty cool in my opinion and with this little trick you immediately get that neoclassical shredding sound. The only thing you need to pay attention to here is the alternate picking. We are playing downstroke, upstroke, downstroke, upstroke and so on. We're starting out by just playing on the high E string. So here we only have the stretching with our left hand. That is a bit challenging. But then a would be a bit too far away on the 5th fret, so we are playing A here on the 10th fret of the B string. And that's where it gets a bit tricky with our right hand. And so on. So you want to play in time, you need to focus on your consecutive alternate picking and of course you also don't want any overlapping notes. So you don't want that kind of sound should sound like. So once again the listener shouldn't really hear that you're switching between two different strings. And it's pretty much everything you need to know about the first trick. Make sure to practice those pedal tone licks in a lot of different sections on the fretboard so you always have them ready whenever you need them in your desired key. The second trick is working with harmonic minor instead of just working with natural minor. Maybe you remember this information from my other videos, but if we compare natural minor and harmonic minor real quick, for natural minor we are playing A, B, C, D, E, F, G, up to A once again, just in one octave, all the notes, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. And in order to get harmonic minor, we just have to change one note here. We have to raise the seventh scale degree. So we need to turn G into G sharp. So for harmonic minor, I'm playing A, B, C, D, E, F, the exact same notes as natural minor. But then I'm playing G sharp instead of G. So. That is the sound of harmonic minor. Once again the comparison, natural minor A, B, C, D, 
E, F, G, A. Harmonic minor, A, B, C, D, E, F, G sharp. Back up to A. And this darker and more exotic sound is often used in neoclassical shred licks. For my example, I was just descending the A harmonic minor scale right here. I was playing F, E, D, C, B, A, G sharp right here. The most important note. Then F, E, then down to D, C, and B. So comparing that to natural minor, that would sound like... Like that. So relatively plain sounding, but when I play that same lick in harmonic minor, that sounds much more interesting. So that is another very helpful tip, not just concerning neoclassical playing. Whenever you feel like your minor licks sound a bit stale, you can just erase the seventh scale degree and turn them into harmonic minor licks. Of course you need to pay attention to what is happening in the background. If there's just a power chord for example, you're pretty much good to go. Because there's just the root and the perfect fifth played here. But if there's a chord like a minor seventh chord, where you have that minor seventh interval of natural minor, and you're playing that raised seventh scale degree over that, you might enter the harmonic danger zone, so to say. And last but not least, a super important factor, I was working with arpeggios in the end. In our case I was just playing an A minor arpeggio, consisting only out of three notes. A, the root note, C, the minor third, and E, the perfect fifth, just like we have it in our basic A minor chord. But to make that a bit more interesting, I also applied what we learned about harmonic minor with the previous lick by tapping G sharp, the characteristic note of A harmonic minor up here, instead of, I guess the most popular version would be tapping A once again. So by doing that I get the more exotic harmonic minor sound right here. The reason why arpeggios are so often used in neoclassical shredding is because you can bring out the sound of these classical cadences easily. For example, when I'm arpeggiating the very common chord progression of A minor, E major, that already sounds a bit like classical music, I'm getting something like that. So I'm switching between an A minor, E major and back to an A minor arpeggio right here, a little bit slower. And that sounds really cool and resembles classical music much more than just playing the A minor scale over that section for example. If you like the sound and style of sweep picking but can't really master the motion yet, make sure to check out my new online course Sweep Picking Masterclass. In that one I'm teaching a super fast, clean and effective sweep picking technique over the course of 10 weeks. So you start out as a beginner in the course, I'm practicing all of the course workouts together with you in pre-recorded videos over the course of 10 weeks and after that you have all the right exercises to finally master sweep picking sections like that one for example. So those are three really cool tricks you can always use to bring out that neoclassical shredding sound with your licks. Don't forget to download the tabs, guitar profiles and practice backing tracks for this video to get the full lesson experience over at patreon.com slash Bernd. Also make sure to subscribe to join this community today, leave a like if you enjoyed this video or if you learned something new and a comment in case I can answer any questions for you. I hope that you have a lot of fun practicing all that cool stuff and I will see you in the next lesson next week. All the best until then.